I have been using my Canon EOS R5 Mark II quite a lot over the last month or so. I've been taking pictures of bearded reedlings in Germany. I've been in Italy to take pictures of the much bigger ibex. And of course, I have also taken plenty of photographs here in Switzerland. And overall, I'm very pleased and happy with the camera. However, as you might have seen online, there were some discussions about the image quality because it seems as the high ISO performance and especially the dynamic range is actually a bit worse than on the predecessor, the R5. And obviously nobody wants to buy a new camera with less image quality. So I checked several tests online and I conducted my own tests and I want to show you the results here and talk about what implication it has for the real world, in which situation you will really see that the old R5 is better. But there's also some situations where the new R5 Mark II is actually better in terms of image quality. So of course, I also want to talk about that. And then finally, um, there are, are some features that actually that Canon actively removed when they announced the R5 Mark II. And of course, they didn't talk about features they removed. So I want to mention these features here so that you are aware of them in case one of them is really important for you that you will not buy a new R5 Mark II and be disappointed. So first I want to talk about the high ISO performance of both cameras. I did a simple setup at home. I closed the blinds. I used artificial light so that everything is as consistent as possible between the tests of the two cameras. And then I did all the tests that I mentioned here, both with the electronic shutter and with the mechanical shutter. So starting with the ISO test, I started at 100 ISO and went all the way up to 25,600 ISO. And obviously at 100 ISO, both uh, cameras produce RAW files that are very, very clean. At 800 ISO, still the same thing. At 1600 ISO, we start to see a bit more noise in the background. However, I think both look still very good and also very comparable. Uh, if we move to 6400 ISO, I feel like the R5, the original R5 has a small advantage. Nothing big, but a small advantage. And then at 25,600 ISO, the advantage of the R5 is clearer. And especially if we look in one of the more dark corners of the image, we see that the new R5 Mark II shows significantly more noise. So all these images that I just showed you were done with the electronic shutter, but with the mechanical shutter, the performance looked actually basically the same. So I don't want to repeat all of this. If we move to the dynamic range, I think there was more buzz about the dynamic range issue of the R5 Mark II. And I should say issue in quotation marks, I don't think it's a huge deal. So here we first start in the mechanical shutter. Um, in the mechanical shutter, both cameras are able to theoretically record 14-bit files. So what I did here is basically just underexpose the image by three stops. So I shot it at 100 ISO, but with a shutter speed that would have been appropriate for 800 ISO. In afterwards in post, I just pushed the raw file by plus three stops and I also brought down a little bit the highlights so that we see a bit more of these uh, fine feather details in the Tucan um, here behind me because I wanted to kind of assess the dynamic range from both ways. But we will see the differences basically in the dark areas um, and we see the differences in terms of loss of detail and especially more noise and less nice colors. And here at 100 ISO, the difference is not dramatic, but we can see that the um, R5 Mark II shows a bit more noise, shows less dynamic range. If we go to higher ISO, such as 800, um, the difference is, I would say, the same. The R5 is still better. And also at 6400, which is quite an extreme scenario, I would say the R5, the original one, is performing clearly better. Again, the most extreme if you go in the dark corners. But to be honest, in most situations, I want to use the electronic shutter on my cameras because it just means that I have, um, I, am, I can shoot silent, I don't disturb the animals, I don't disturb other photographers, uh, I have a faster frame rate, 
and also I have no shutter shock which can be quite a big deal because if you actually look closely at the image before with the um, mechanical shutter at 100 ISO even though I was shooting from a tripod with a 10 seconds timer I still had some shutter shock so um, this is definitely a big deal and this can be avoided by the electronic shutter. So in electronic shutter mode, one of the big uh, advantages of the R5 Mark II is that it can also record 14-bit files, at least in theory, where the original R5 is stuck to this or limited to 12-bit files. And if we now start pushing the shadows at 100 ISO with the electronic shutter, we see that the R5 Mark II actually performs a bit better. If we go to higher ISO, such as 800, 1600 and more, we see that the R5 Mark II basically loses this advantage just because at higher ISO, this 12-bit limitation of the file format is not a thing anymore because at, let's say, 1600 ISO, the camera is anyway not capable of recording more than 12-bit of uh, dynamic range. So the limitation here that they can only shoot 12-bit RAW on the original R5 is not really a limitation anymore. So to summarize, overall at high ISO the noise performance of the R5 is better. At low ISO there is not a big difference. If you want to have a big dynamic range and you want to shoot in the electronic shutter, then um, the R5 Mark II will give you the advantage in the lower ISO range and in the higher ISO range the R5 has a slight advantage. If however you want to use the mechanical shutter or you can use the mechanical shutter then the R5, the original one, is clearly better and we see the biggest difference in the lower ISO. Both cameras are actually better in the mechanical shutter than in the electronic shutter but the difference on the original R5 is bigger. And for wildlife photography, if I was shooting backlit or something, I was actually often moving uh, back to the, to the mechanical shutter on the original R5 just to get a bit more dynamic range, even though this meant that I need to deal with these like negative side effects, such as a loud noise of the shutter, um, that uh, I have shutter shock and I have a slower frame rate. And I think now with the R5 Mark II, since the electronic shutter gives me a better dynamic range here than the electronic shutter did on the original R5, I will maybe stick more to the electronic shutter and just shoot there all the time. And I don't need to think so often uh, for switching back and forth. So in my opinion, that's an advantage if you like to shoot in the electronic shutter. If, however, you do a lot of landscape photography or birds that really don't move at all and are also not so shy that the sound of the shutter would be an issue, then of course the R5 can bring an advantage. And I also think if you shoot a lot of landscapes and not really fast action, the R5 Mark II in general doesn't really offer anything new. Because let's be honest, all the, all the improvements of the R5 Mark II that I really like, don't get me wrong, but they are all either video based or in terms of speed, like better autofocus, faster frame rate, faster sensor readout. And all these things don't really matter for landscape photography. So if I were a pure landscape photographer, I would honestly just stick with my R5, save the money or invest it in a lens or a fun photography trip, but I would not do the upgrade to the R5 Mark II. For wildlife photography, it's quite different because we have the stacked sensor here and this is really nice to avoid this rolling shutter that I sometimes had with my original R5. Just for finishing this discussion about image quality, um, the same effect or a similar effect can also be observed with other manufacturers. For example, the Nikon Z7 Mark II had a better image quality and dynamic range than the Nikon Z8 and Z9. And what was the main change? I mean, both had a 45 megapixel sensor, the Z8 and Z9 are newer. Why do they have a worse image quality and a dynamic range? It's a stacked sensor. Here we see exactly the same. And a bit more extreme even with Sony, with their Alpha 9 Mark III, they announced this global shutter, which is even faster than a stacked sensor, and we saw an even bigger hit in performance. It seems like most professional photographers that want to buy this camera buy it because of the speed, and they are okay with the trade-off that we have. But you need to be aware there is a slight trade-off, and for me, the benefit of not having any distortions anymore really outperforms the slight hit that we take in image quality. So now I want to talk about a few features that I noticed are missing on the new R5 Mark II. The first one is this high resolution IBIS shot where the camera basically moves the image stabilizer, the IBIS in the camera a tiny bit 
to um, assemble a high resolution shot. I think it was like 400 megapixels. However, this was done JPEG only, so honestly, I don't care so much for it. You now have an AI software rescaling in the R5 Mark II. I never tested it because once more, it only works in JPEG. Canon also dropped the dual pixel RAW. This was a format where the camera actually recorded the information of both subpixels. That, I mean, these sensors are divided in, uh, each pixel is divided in two subpixels. This is done for the autofocus. And here, um, I think Canon announced it with the R, with the EOS 5DS and 5DSR. And basically what it allowed you to do was in digital professional photo, the image editing software of Canon, you could do a slight change or a slight shift in the focus. So you, if the image was slightly back focused, you could move the focus by a millimeter or so. I actually never really used it apart for testing it once because you lose uh, basically the, the um, high-speed drive modes. Um, so not the problem for me. One thing that was creating a bit more buzz is that now you cannot use um, or not do raw uh, multiple exposure images anymore. So if you want to do a double exposure, let's say take a picture of a sunset and afterwards of a bird and blend the images, this could be done in raw with the R5 and with the R5 Mark II it can be only done in JPEG. For me, this is not a big deal. I actually never understood why this was a raw feature because um, this raw feature allowed that you can basically give these double exposures to competitions. And if you now do the same in Photoshop, it's often not allowed in competitions. And for me, it never really made sense why it was like allowed in the first place, to be honest, because you could just take a picture and a few days later, take a second picture and merge them in the camera. So. Yeah, that's just my opinion. Um, but be aware, if this is important to you, the R5 Mark II does not have this feature. I also noticed that the videos uh, end up in a different folder than the, than the still images. It might affect your workflow a bit. This is, maybe I'm missing a setting here where I can change this. Not a big thing, but maybe important for you if you uh, have just discovered that you cannot find the images anymore on the CF Express card, they are just in a different folder. Finally, there are some video features like 4K 120 or the 4K 30 mode with the high quality, which is oversampled 4K. Um, this worked with the R5 and with the R5 Mark II, it only works if you use the new battery. And this is slightly annoying, to be honest, because I usually just use my old batteries for filming to keep the good ones for having pre-capture and having the 30 frames per second. But now I also need to use the new ones for filming. So actually I ordered another battery. I have three now and now it seems to be fine. Uh, but this is, I mean, I get it from one side because now we have a more efficient codec, which I assume needs more processing power. But for some situations, I would be fine with just having the old codec that uses a bit more space if I could use the old battery for these situations. If I missed any features, then let me know in the comments below. And I will do a full review about the camera at a later point. I'm still testing. I just wanted to get these few things out of my head because I think overall I'm very, very happy with this camera. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to see this video. And I'm currently filming this video here with the Canon EOS R1. And obviously I will also do a review about that one. So subscribe to this channel and see you soon.